All right, I want to preface this video by saying, let's agree to disagree. What I'm about to say will indeed ruffle some feathers, and saying that won't prevent a flame war, but it'll at least mentally prepare us for it. There's been some very interesting discourse surrounding TF2's decals recently. Yes, I'm late to the party, but I figured I'd let the dust settle for a little while before giving my two cents. I know most TF2 players really don't care about decals or cosmetics or anything beyond the gameplay itself, and the social aspects orbiting TF2 aren't on most players' radars either. They just want to play the game and don't interact with the YouTube, Twitter, or Reddit spaces surrounding TF2, what have you. But I believe what I'm about to share really needs to be said by somebody. A YouTuber recently made this video airing their grievances with TF2's decal system. This guy lays out arguments in support of increased moderation of decals, condemning this form of user-generated content as something that shouldn't have been added and labels them as TF2's biggest mistake. This video received swift backlash and quickly became one of the most disliked videos in TF2 YouTube history. Much of the meaningful kickback to this video is forever relegated to the depths of a YouTube comment section, and it contains legitimate concerns and retorts that, I think, resonate with most players. I believe it's worth sharing these opinions, and my own, to this wider audience. Most of what I have to say is in direct response to this video, so if you want to watch that first, by all means. And obviously, please, for the love of God, this goes without saying. Do not bother the guy who made it. I have to say that, otherwise I'll get the ankle biters again. Yeah, this is a long one, so strap in, grab a drink, get comfortable, let's begin. Before I start, let me just say this. There's nothing wrong with TF2's decal system, nor any of its other user-generated content. These systems have never been a problem before, and they're completely fine now. All of the problems with TF2's user-generated content stem from a small minority of bad actors that do not represent the majority nor the majority of player interactions. Saying these bad apples are a representative majority of players, or insinuating that some widespread problem exists with decals that Valve must step in to address, is simply false, and overdramatizes minor, infrequent affronts to one's own personal sensitivities. To take that and then use it as a means to label decals as TF2's biggest mistake, in spite of what the game currently suffers from, is not only a gross exaggeration but an insult to anyone who enjoys TF2. TF2 is facing neglect, neglect that has allowed for cheaters and bots to proliferate and ruin the game. If you really want to talk about some of TF2's biggest mistakes, look at that neglect, Valve's inaction against bots and cheaters, or back to something like Meet Your Match. That was the first fuck up, because before you even watch this video, it's immediately disagreeable. That said, this video demonizes TF2's decals because they can be used to display explicit images and offensive material. Ergo, they should face increased moderation, or removal, and are the game's biggest mistake because... 1. Children play the game. Therefore, minors are being exposed to not safe for work material or offensive content at a wide ramp and scale. 2. Streamers play the game, and could therefore get banned from their streaming service of choice if illicit content is shown on their screen. 3. Decals are a rampant source of what he calls not-safe-for-life material, that they're filled with pornography, gore, and cheese pizza, also insinuating a widespread occurrence of these things. And 4. Players are unwillingly exposed to the offensive content. Therefore, Valve should step in because it's against their terms of service. Before I lay into these arguments, for the past 12 years, Valve has very clearly shown us what they consider acceptable for decals and sprays, which is pretty much anything, so long as it isn't illegal. That's how it's been since the beginning, and this player would have known this had he been playing prior to 2017. Personally, I started when I was 14. Ever since decals were implemented in 2011, their moderation has been effectively non-existent, aside from the infinitesimally few cases in which illegal materials are shown. These few fringe cases are short-term and subsequently dealt with by Valve. It's disingenuous 
ridiculous and misleading to use the arguments of cheese pizza at all, however facetious, while ignoring the fact that Valve does indeed ban people for showing illegal material, and that we have the tools at our disposal to report it when we see it. The amount of illegal material in TF2 is almost always zero. This video grossly exaggerates the volume of it to exacerbate a non-existent problem and gain sympathy. In other words, fear-mongering. And it's even more disingenuous to use the removal of sprays as a proxy and justification for these arguments. For those unaware, TF2 sprays got disabled by default back in 2021, and the temp folder that holds them gets wiped after you turn off your game. It's why it lags after you hit the exit button. This change came about because someone fear-mongered the community into thinking that bots were spraying cheese pizza inside of Valve servers and getting it on other people's computers. Back in the day, when sprays appeared in-game and you saw them, they were automatically saved to a temp folder on your computer, meaning Hypothetically, bad actors could get illegal material on your machine if they sprayed it in a server that had sprays enabled and you were inside of it at the same time. But this was a lie. It wasn't happening. Long before Meet Your Match, and way before the bot problem, sprays had been disabled on Valve servers, meaning the only places where this could happen were inside of community servers, where bots rarely or never enter, and if they do, are immediately banned. Meaning, this widespread problematic transferal of cheese pizza never happened before. Okay, fine, maybe if you found yourself deep in the annals of the community server browser, you could find some shady shit. And, ironically enough, the individual who fear-mongered cheese pizza and sprays ended up being a fan of the playground himself. Who'd have guessed? Also, think of it this way, isn't it a bit Stupid to go around a public space showing you have illegal material like this? Talk about a quick way to get locked up. Valve has your bank information, your location, and would undoubtedly hand that over to the authorities immediately upon being reported. This further shows just how grossly exaggerated these arguments are. Now then, what does that leave? This leaves decals containing explicit and or subjectively offensive materials, but legal materials. Now this guy's other arguments kick in. The first of which being the main argument people have been parading around right now. Minors play TF2. Therefore, kiddos are being exposed to explicit content. Ergo, decals must be moderated. This... Pearl clutching is immediately invalidated by the fact that TF2 is an M-rated game. 17 plus. Online interactions not rated by the ESRB. Your classic game of TF2, by definition, is an unrated mature space online. Children, minors, should not be playing this game in the first place. It is not the responsibility of the of-age people within a mature space to control what minors see if they engage with that space. It's the parent's responsibility. Full stop. Oh, but the game's rating doesn't take into account user-generated content. Online interactions not rated by the ESRB. This liability statement is packaged with games containing any form of online player interactions, encapsulating all features that allow for players to communicate, including decals, sprays, text chat, voice chat, name tags, etc. Of course, the game's focus isn't being an image host, but it contains features within it that can, and do, show subjectively offensive and not safe for work material. Sometimes. Most players are fully aware of that, and deal with its unrated nature just fine. Next argument. What about the streamers? Streamers could have explicit content shown on their screen, and could then get banned from their platform of choice. Once again, TF2 is an M-rated game. Unrated online. You assume the risks of streaming an M-rated game on a platform with their own rules and regulations. You also know full well what's inside of this game. Decals, voice chat, text chat, name tags, and so on. Other forms of user-generated content that could potentially display material that violates terms of service and could get you in trouble. And yet, people still choose to stream the game. They assume these risks, as rare as they do occur. And listen, just because a game isn't fit for streaming doesn't mean that it should bend itself to accommodate that 
tiny percentage of players who choose to stream it. I understand that modern game developers want their titles to be streamable from a marketing standpoint. It's a common expectation to limit and sanitize online interactions for the sake of products remaining acceptable for kids. It's a massive market, and of course, remaining acceptable in the prevailing public narrative's eyes. But TF2 is 16 years old. It's a product of its time. Part of its identity are its open player interactions, back when that sort of thing was allowed. This game wasn't made to be streamed, or made for commercialized esports, or made for YouTubers making kids content. It was made to be fun, just like how games used to be. Knowing this, and everything TF2 contains, if you still choose to stream it, steps can be taken to ensure that you don't get in trouble. Alter your own experience. Turn off voice chat. Turn off text chat. Turn off sprays. Install a streamer HUD. Install the mod that turns off decals. And then go play inside a streamer-friendly community servers like Uncle Topia that ban anyone for saying anything remotely offensive. You have the tools at your disposal to safely stream this game. Use them. Just like everyone else has for the past, I don't know, 13 years? Streamers already take precautions for other games and activities, and avoid things that could get them in hot water, so why must TF2 be the exception? Listen, I used to stream TF2 a lot, and dealt with people trying to get crap on my screen, and they did get crap on my screen, so I started taking steps to mitigate that shit on my own. I don't demand for everyone else's experience, or for their user-generated content, to be intensively moderated or removed for my own benefit. Perhaps I thought that way at one time, but I certainly don't think that way now. That's the streamer argument set aside. This sudden uproar about decals effectively boils down to one's own personal sensitivities being infringed upon, with not safe for work and or offensive content. To which all I can say is... Uh, I mean, sorry, you're shit out of luck. TF2's always been this way. Why are we suddenly complaining about it now? Given the nature of open and free expression, yeah, you're gonna come across something personally offensive or not safe for work, but... As before, these don't make up a majority of player interactions, and it's deceitful to say they're causing widespread rampant problems when they never have before. Most people don't have a problem with decals, let alone any other form of user-generated content in TF2. They might occasionally see something naughty, but most people are perfectly capable of just ignoring it altering their own experience, or moving on. And who cares if you see something offensive or not safe for work in TF2? The game is a mature, largely unmoderated space, with features that allow for players to post and say whatever the fuck they want, so long as it's legal. Features that have been present for most of the game's lifespan, with little to no issues. What did you expect? So why bother making this video at all? This, it should be done, here and now, that's it. All of these arguments have been made, they've been said by other people. Why bother making this? Here's why. This YouTuber grossly over-exaggerates a nearly non-existent problem, and then concludes with a demand to Valve, asking they step in to moderate decals, praying that they do something sooner rather than later to address this ambiguous widespread issue of people seeing offensive things they don't want to see. Who knows what Valve will actually do about custom decals, and or if they do anything at all. I just hope it's sooner rather than never at all. 99.99% .99 of the time, Valve does not care if it's legal, but historically, when they do step in for the sake of moderation, they tend to use the nuclear option. Valve doesn't have the manpower nor desire to moderate player-made content, so they just opt to flip the kill switch whenever they're pressured. That is the fear. The fear that Valve will strip away another piece of this game's soul in response to fear-mongering. Just like they did when they muted free-to-plays when bots were abusing text chat, instead of addressing the actual problem that is bots. Which ultimately solve nothing, just like when they completely nuked sprays because some nonce lied out of his ass. Precious player interactions that we'll never get back. Decals have never been this widespread, rampant problem before. This fear-mongering came way out of left field all of a sudden, and the consequences could be, well, Typical. Valve could just turn decals off, given their track record, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did. My god, the last time all it took was a tweet and a couple of Reddit posts. This time we got a viral video, no matter how negatively it was received. And yeah, the chances of Valve actually disabling decals is likely slim, considering people pay money to use these features, however little, yet I wouldn't put it past them. That is why I made this video, to push back against this possibility, and this, frankly, 
idiotic fear-mongering brought about by someone with skin thinner than tissue paper. Actually, I think rice paper is thinner than tissue paper, so that's more appropriate. Either way, they're both transparent and a gust of wind can poke a fucking hole in them. Anyways, let's get philosophical. Let's get hypothetical here. Probably gonna lose some people, but I think this is worth discussing even further. If by some act of God, Valve were to step in, do the extra work, and actually moderate any form of TF2's user-generated content at the request of this YouTuber, how would it be handled? How should it be handled? Who decides the rules? Beyond removing illegal material, which Valve already does, what does that leave? Well, this leaves the minority of instances displaying explicit or subjectively offensive material, ergo, remove it for the sake of the people who find it bothersome, I guess. All right, that's a pretty vague rule, so at whose discretion? Who decides what is and is not offensive and explicit? You? Me? Valve? Where's the line drawn? At Gore? Well, all right, I think that's something most people could agree on. Okay, then what? Hardcore porn? Well, I think most people are still on the same page at this point. But then are anime sprays like this considered pornographic too? Well, shockingly to some people it is. You should see how people reacted to this screenshot of a spray that wasn't even mine. And then what about this? This clearly wasn't explicit enough to be censored in that video. Who gets to choose? Who vets what is and is not safe for work? And then what? What about other offensive imagery that isn't explicit? Who decides what is and is not offensive? Offensive is subjective. What one person finds offensive isn't offensive to the next guy. And then what about text features? Do we moderate name tags, text chat, voice chat, description tags? Those could contain offensive things too. What about community servers? You could accidentally stumble into a furry server and see something you don't like. Should community servers be subject to increased moderation for the sake of those who willingly engage with a space that might contain something they don't want to see? And then what about cosmetics? There are offensive loadouts too. Do these go as well? There's also non-explicit imagery, words, arguments, ideas, or phrases that are considered offensive by some. Where does it stop? It's not just heckin' slurs and porn and gore, it's never just that. Demands for increased moderation almost always stem into other things that are generically labeled as offensive, as this video heavily insinuates. I want to be able to play anywhere in TF2 without the concern of being exposed to offensive or NSFW content, and I- Increased moderation is indeed a slippery censorship slope, which takes hold all too often these days, and only allows for politically correct, sanitized slop to proliferate in online multiplayer games. Or, nothing at all. This mentality completely gimps all forms of player interactions. It makes games soulless, gray, almost zero communication or minimal expression these days. It's all this nice, safe, gooey, corporate-friendly, marketable gruel for kids, social media, and of course, a higher ESG score. This chips at the fabric and culture of TF2 and many older games, which have always allowed for free expression across various avenues. I'm of the volition that people should be allowed to say and show what they want in the few online spaces that still allow it, which TF2 is, so long as it's legal, of course. It's how this game has been for its entire lifespan, with minimal issues. If you choose to engage with a space that has always allowed free expression, you will be exposed to things outside of your comfort zone, for better or worse. And that's a good thing. It makes you grow as a person, instead of encouraging relegation into echo chambers of reinforcement. It gets dirt on your boots. It thickens your skin. And of course, if you dare express any of these ideas in any capacity, the usual Twitter troglodytes default to that same argument of, oh, well, you just want to say slurs and be a Nazi and show porn and gore to kids. No, I'm tired of these morons defaulting to that same argument. This is disingenuous reductive fallacy that villainizes dissenters and dismisses legitimate concerns against increased moderation and censorship. The fear isn't that our ability to say slurs and show porn is being taken away. It's a fear of of that slippery slope. Just because we allow for all forms of expression doesn't mean that we automatically agree with all of it or even enjoy looking at it. I don't like looking at gore. The only people that do are the degenerate fucks that try to get a rise out of somebody. But if you give an inch, they'll take a mile and then the tumble down the slope begins. Again, this would require some alternate universe in which Valve actually moderates their games, but they don't beyond dropping the nuke. Listen, TF2 is a product of its time. 
It was birthed in an era where people could say what they want and show what they want. I understand that social climates change over time, seemingly for the worst as of late, but TF2 shouldn't change to meet those expectations. I'm almost happy that TF2 remains in a state of neglect and never took off after Meet Your Match. It continues to remain that product of its time, forever preserved as this amazing game experience that it is, with all of its features and flaws. Could you imagine how sterile and stale this game would be now if it miraculously became the next big esport? Ugh, player expression is fun. It's okay to laugh at offensive shit. A little bit of edgy is fine. It's good for you. You gotta burn your hand on the stove or skin your knee climbing the fence once in a while. Who cares? They're just images and words on your screen. You can choose to look at them or engage with the spaces they're present in. No one is being forced to look at any of it. No one's holding your eyes open and pressing your skull against the screen. It's your choice. Don't waltz into TF2, which has always allowed for people to say and show what they want, and then demand those things be taken away if you see something you don't like. TF2 may seem like it isn't the most welcoming or friendly community, but it's certainly one of the last spaces where free, open expression is allowed. Where anyone can say anything. All of it is fair game. I think that's why people confuse it with being a welcoming community. It's an open community. Let's keep it that way. If TF2's user-generated content features bother you that much, you got two options. Sterilize, or don't play the game at all. If you don't like what the game has to offer, then why continue engaging with it? Don't demand that it change for your own benefit. It's obviously not the product for you. Probably a mistake to put this point at the end of the video, but the only agreeable request in that video is a toggle for decals. That I'm okay with. In fact, most people are okay with this. Most players are against the idea of increased moderation, but are totally fine with a toggle. Not giving decals the spray treatment so that they're disabled by default and only your decals are visible to you, that defeats the purpose. But certainly give them that toggle. Most other forms of user-generated content in TF2 are optional. So if players want to sanitize their own experience, by all means. But don't ruin it for everybody else. Listen, the gall you must have to walk into TF2 when you started playing in 2017 and demand that things should change to protect your own personal sensitivities, labeling decals as the game's biggest mistake when you never experienced TF2 in its heyday or any of its other shortcomings aside from bots is fucking laughable. Listen, Sandwich, because I'm not afraid to say your name. You got dunked on because you presented opinions that most TF2 players find disagreeable. You waltzed into a dedicated, established player base and demonized a widely beloved form of player expression which is ingrained as part of the game's identity alongside all of its other user-generated content. Players have enjoyed decals and largely had no problems with them for 12 years. You demonize these things using bad faith arguments, lies, and over-exaggerations that did nothing but detract from your concerns, which do resonate with some, but for the most part, fall to the wayside in the face of no one really giving a shit. When people disagreed with you, you and your friends retreated to your safe spaces on Twitter, defaulted to the one decent conclusion of making decals toggleable, and then cried out, labeling everyone who disliked your video as someone who doesn't want to toggle, or that they're just Nazis and fans of the playground that want to show porn to kids. Do you not see how ridiculous that reductive screeching is? How silly this sounds? It reminds me of this meme. It's extremely disingenuous and petty to label anyone who disagrees with you as someone who only wants to use decals to show explicit materials to minors or show off things you find offensive. That isn't the case at all. It's belligerent fallacy spun to bring yourself up and put anyone else who disagrees with you down, while ignoring the aforementioned problems increased moderation brings, especially from Valve, and ignoring the risk of this video leading to the obliteration of decals thanks to Valve often flipping the fucking kill switch. I'll close this video with a comment on your own, Sandwich, because this guy eloquently lays you out while summarizing all of the points in this past, I don't know, probably half hour long video now. People of any age are not going to expect to see this kind of content when playing the game, and frankly, they shouldn't. TF2 may be home to cartoony gore and relatively vulgar language, but mature content is not on the same level as NSFL or adult content, and it never will be. 
person who is getting mad at the game that's always had all of this. The end point of having a toggle, which defaults to decals being on, is correct, but you ultimately made a 12 minute video bitching about other people enjoying how the game has been for the past 15 years of its existence, and stretching super hard to justify it. Why should an M rated game, with online components unrated no less, traditionally centered on user generated content and unofficial servers, move toward restricting what people can do all for the sake of kids who shouldn't be playing it? How? Out of every issue this game notorious for being plagued with bots, is this its biggest mistake? The only half reasonable argument here is cheese pizza, which you vastly over exaggerate. Neither I, nor anyone else I ever encountered, has ever seen it. And then ignore the fact that it gets banned. It's like you made a 12 minute video essay getting mad at an image host or social media website allowing for people to post images you might not like, and then go on to say that cheese pizza means images should be turned off altogether. Instead of going to Valve, who does ban for illegal stuff, or going inside of a community server that can have whatever arbitrary moderation you'd like, you shit your pants over a game that that's existed just fine since before you were in grade school and insist its culture should universally change for you. I know you've functionally never known an internet without it being super filtered social media bullshit, but please, for the love of God, understand that not everything has to be centralized and moderated, because everything about this video, except for the end point being, there should be a toggle, indicates that you don't. Gatekeep your communities, people. Gatekeep them and preserve them for what they are before people like this worm their way in and make it rot from the inside out. You guys played the same song and dance of lies with sprays. Disrespectfully, go ruin another game.